the glasses. So what I'd like to do now is introduce Ryan Ozimek, the president of OSM, um, who's brought some penguins with us, with him to show. This is quite strange for me because I met Ryan for the first time uh, in London about six weeks ago. Um, but we've spoken on the telephone and things for about six and a half years. So it's, 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 quite, it's quite nice to suddenly go, so that's what you look like. <laughs> and you really are that short. <laughs> so I'm gonna, at this point, I'm just going to hand over to Ryan. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brian. I've, I've only been the president of Open Source Matters for a few months, so they told me that there was going to be security detail with me, being a president, right? So I think this is the best I've got. So if you have eggs, tomatoes, other fruits to throw, I'm just going to duck down over here. But we, uh, we're going to wake up the neighborhood here, folks. I don't do standing presentations and talk. I don't do... I don't do talks like this over presentation lecterns. But first, guten tag, J and beyond. Now, there'll be throughout the day. I have a feeling there's going to be an opportunity for us to get a little excited, jazzed about what we're doing here. And luckily, there's there's something called the World Cup. That's going to be starting soon, is that right? A game called soccer. I've, we don't talk about it. Anymore. Yes, thank you. We have uh, a South African contingent who, from what I understand, has a few of these. And I think, um, Matthew, am I correct in saying that these should be distributed later on today? Yes, excellent. So uh, I expect heavy rivalries. Uh, the United States, I don't know. <laughs> I think we have a team. Um, but good morning. Again, guten tag. Um, in our efforts to wake up the neighborhood, I mean waking up the hallway, all the people that are still sleeping, how dare they miss my presentation. I mean the people of the middle of Germany, Germany, the European Union. I need everybody to stand up. St you have to actually come up. <laughs> Johan, you have an injury, I understand. No problem. Others that have, don't worry about this. Um, we're going to do a little vocalization exercise here. It's really easy. You've played this game before. I say this, you say that. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Make it loud. All of Germany needs to hear this. When I say Joomla, you say rocks. Joomla. Rock. Joomla. Rock. When I say J, you say beyond. J. Beyond. J. When I say Alex, you say Kempkins. Alex, Alex. When I say Robert, you say Deutz. Robert, Robert. Thank you very much. Oh, wait, well, there's one more. That's OK. OK, forgive me. We'll, just, we'll think about this slide. We won't have to say it now that we've sat down. I did go to bed a little late last night. There was a crew downstairs in the cave, as I like to call it, that was up until, uh, I think, four in the morning. Uh, so thank you for helping me wake up, and I hope I helped you wake up as well. Just a little overview. There's a couple of companies in the technology world that are pretty big. One of them is called Apple, and the other one's called Microsoft. Did anybody see what happened in the financial news on Friday between these two companies? All right, well, I figured as much. <laughs> um, we're seeing a massive change in the way in which people are expecting and using technology. Usability, ease of use, keeping things simple are one of the number one things people expect from their technology today. On Friday, the marketplace, at least the stock exchange out in New York, said, we value Apple more than Microsoft. The market valuation of Apple surpassed Microsoft. 10 years ago, Apple was dead, gone. They have 
nice shiny little buttons. That's, that's great. Yeah, the, the business people, no, nah, we're not going to use this. People like us, we don't have, does anybody have an iPhone? I mean, that will never catch on. That's ridiculous. Uh, well, we've got a massive change. What I want us to be thinking about today, tomorrow, and beyond. There used to be something in the Mambo world where the tagline was power in simplicity, right? For people that remember those days. I believe we've got software, we've got community, and we have the energy from people like you here today to allow us to catch this wave because I really believe that what we have in Joomla is what our community, what content publishers, and what our organizations and companies need to survive and to make it through 2010 and beyond. We just need to paddle, 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 paddle. Thank you to Robert, thank you to Alex, thank you to everybody else who's been able to put this together. We can do this as a community, folks. So to give you an idea of what I've been listening to. I've gone on a three-month listening tour. I've had a chance in that time to speak at Imperial College in London, off to San Francisco, in Sweden virtually. Thank you to the Swedish contingent for letting me speak there at their Joomla Day. Off to Chicago at CMS Expo, in Brazil talking uh, to uh, Ensol, uh, as well as uh, RBS and a couple of corporations doing amazing enterprise installations with Joomla. Washington, D.C., uh, Joomla user group there is getting its way going. Uh, now here in Germany and then in a week in New England, in Vermont, for the Joomla Day New England. And Joe is here. I'm sure there might be some others that will be joining me there uh, as well. It's been an amazing first <laughs> three months or two and a half months uh, as OSM president to listen, to go out and hear what people have to say. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to the community for everybody over the course of the past 24 hours, past 24 months that I've been on the board, and just the last three months of sharing your concerns, things you're excited about, and what you hope to see from the project in the future. So with all of this listening that I've been trying to do, I just want to give you a warning. My presentation today, what do I have? I have another 15 minutes, so this will be very fast. <laughs> my presentation today might make heads explode. It's made my head explode listening to folks talk and share so much information. Or you might get hit by a truck, I guess, which is the bigger picture. I don't know why that was there. So a little overview for folks that might not know me. Uh, no, I'm not him. No, you might know him, but I'm not him. No, I'm not him either. OK, here we go. My name, again, is Ryan Osnick. Do we have any Polish people in the room today? Wow. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank goodness. Was there another hand somewhere? Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, Ozimek. Ozimek is the last name. If you want to say nice things, if you want to impress me with your Polish language, Ryan Ozimek. For people that just want to do the American bastardization of it, just call me Oz or Osnick. I'm from Washington, DC. I'm from a city where, as I walk down the sidewalk, half the people vehemently disagree with what I believe in every day. So when I saw this opportunity to help out and, and be on the board of Open Source Matters and now to be the president, people warned me. They said, you've got a tough job ahead of you. People are not always going to agree with what you said. I said, that's great. This is my daily life in Washington. I'm ready for the challenge. Uh, I'm the CEO of a company called PicNet, where we do putt-putt golf, web development, and support Mr. Barack Obama. Uh, unlike these gentlemen here, uh, Andrew, Lewis, and Rob, this is a photo taken in, um, outside of Munich a couple years ago, I'm not a developer. This is the best development I've ever done. Exclamation point equal sign. That's, that's incredible. I'm amazed by myself. So, I'm not, no, I'm, um, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, this, that, I don't know why we have military flags in the background, unless we've taken up arms somehow, uh, but yes, I am the president uh, of Open Source Matters. So it's been, it's been tough, guys. 
when you become the president, you're given a Ferrari for Mondays. On Tuesdays, you get a Porsche. On Wednesdays, you get a BMW. This one really ticked off people in New York. And I wish Mitch were here, and I wish uh, Raphael were here, because they were very upset when I flew over Statue of Liberty. They just thought that was wrong. So what the heck is OSM? A lot of you know. Luckily, this presentation will be short on the overview. Open Source Matters, it's the nonprofit organization that supports the two leadership teams in their efforts, mostly focused in the legal, the financial, marketing, and events. So you want an org diagram. This is the simple. People like to say, keep it simple. I can't make it simpler than this. It, it could be much better. But there are three heads, production leadership team, community leadership team, and OSM. What I see as a person who believes in limited governance, I believe that OSM serves to assist these two teams in matters where necessary. To put things in perspective, I say this at all the presentations I give, I truly believe that the relationships we build are more important than the tools we build. I'm so impressed by the people that we've had here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You guys self-organize, put an event together, because you too believe these relationships and meeting in person are very important. And I want us to keep that in mind, that as we're building software, as we face challenges, as we're trying to make this a better community, that those relationships are more important than the software. That's what I believe. As you're having discourse, as you're upset with somebody, as you're challenging somebody else's view, as they're challenging yours, remember that these relationships are what's going to make us better. So putting things in perspective, if I really believe these relationships are, are more important, what are the things that OSM and the leadership can be doing to help us reach our community goals? So again, keep a simple approach, only three things. T, for the English friends, Chris, T. <laughs> Transparency, empowerment, and accountability. Simple, there are three things. We can do it, here's how. First, transparency. We need to build trust through openness. How do we do that? Well, why, why, why? Because you guys deserve it. We're, we're helping and, and leading and doing what we can to make things better. If you guys want to know, you should know. So what does that look like? Well, luckily, our board, after I've stepped down as our secretary, has a terrific new secretary who's done amazing board meeting minutes and postings. The next board meeting minutes for Open Source Matters that will be posted online will be in more detail than you ever thought we'd do. Because just a couple months ago, we first put up our board meeting minutes. And now we're going to put them up in a lot more detail. The discussions will be there. That idea came from new board members. It came from people in the community saying, Ryan, good job on doing the basics, on what's expected, and putting up board meeting minutes. We need more. We need to see what's going on. Here's one way we're doing it. The next one, empowerment. This guy, <laughs> it's a strong man. Uh, people, I believe, are most successful when they're given areas of ownership. Not necessarily, this is my turf, don't look at me. This is my task. Give me an opportunity to succeed. Help me in what I'm doing. For me, uh, in Open Source Matters, I'm doing as much as I can to focus on delegation. How do we make sure that all these things don't get bottled up into just one or two people? How do we make sure that the, the, the leadership is, is easily delegated and made as simple as possible for people to succeed in? And finally, accountability. There was a, uh, a president back in the US who said, trust but verify. And I think that's important. We're gaining trust in the community, I believe, from Open Source Matters on a regular basis. We need to make sure that you guys can verify that we're doing a good job. One of those things is any new person taking on a leadership position within our board, I'm asking them to detail out why are they the right person for this position. And not only that, but I would like every six months to check in. 
here were the goals you said, how have you met these goals, how can we help you improve for the next six months? This is, this is simple stuff. We can do this. We, we can definitely do this and be more accountable to you as the community. So transparency, empowerment, accountability, and you, not just the people here, everybody in the community, how can we make sure that we remind, remind ourselves that this is more than just OSM, more than just the leadership scenes, this is the community. So the, obviously there's been a very long road to where we are today. I'm uh, humbled to be in the same room as many leaders of the project, humbled to be introduced by Brian and others. And I know that I simply come on riding the coattails of the success and the challenges that folks have faced earlier. In looking at my time, I'll go a little quickly here, but in managing this, you know, we had a history in the past of being an interesting open source project, one that didn't have an open mailing list where things were fully discussed with the community. We found we reached limits. Developers were getting burned out. We saw slow development and slow innovation. So how should we assist the community? What are the things we can do to make things better as a community? Well, people have said, well, we could have a, a benevolent dictator. There's a, another project that does that. Some, some say very well, some say maybe not as well as could be. We could have some sort of a corporate owner, some big company somehow just leads the whole project and runs it exactly like a corporation maximizing profits. Or we can have a gigantic bullet. I'm gonna just sit here to read it with you. Some sort of communal process of managing the operations of an open source project, a nonprofit, and a massive unit community through holy volunteer effort and led by a man who enjoys surfing but not soccer. Ah, oh, man, I shouldn't have put that last one in there. I forget I'm in soccer world here. I, and, and by, I, I said led by a man, I'm, I'm talking about OSM, of course. So how can we manage, manage all this? Well, is it possible that there can really be just one answer? Or is this what we're doing a grand experiment, as some would say? Are what we're doing as a community and as a leadership team, doing the best we can as volunteers to build something a little different? Well, let's just take a moment to reflect. Just look at this. Over 25,000 downloads of the new Joomla 1.6 beta over two million forum posts, just crossed the 5,000 extensions mark. This community is huge, folks. Yeah, please, congratulations to you. And you guys were all applauding for yourselves. This is obviously, the community has been doing this amazing stuff here. Just quickly, and <laughs> I apologize for the next couple slides, uh, I used archive.org. They have a way back machine, and they allow you to go back in time and see what things were back in time. And they don't have any data here. It's too new. So imagine a smooth curve <laughs> from September of 2008 to today. Over 39,000 posts on the forum on a monthly basis. Here's a look at the user community on the forums. Over 6,000 people joining the forums monthly. The extensions, over 113 extensions added every month. Now, we've seen and heard that there's been challenges for folks trying to get their extensions published. And we have a great team on the JET team that's doing everything they can to process them as quickly as possible. I have respect for this, 113 reviews, 113 opportunities per month that people are doing the best they can to make sure we have a good extensions directory. So let's focus back on the future again. How do we empower this community? Okay, this is, have you guys heard of Mad Libs before? It's a little game we play in the US. Very simple game. But Ryan, I'm only a blank insert amazing job title. I can only do some incredible talent that you have after my number greater than 10 hour a day job at blank amazing company, organization, or school. How can I possibly help? That's what we have, a room full of overachievers 
extremely talented people that need the 24-hour day to somehow magically turn to a 30-hour day? Well, I have answers. And it's beer. I thought that would be great for this crowd. This is the, the motherland of beer. <laughs> no, not that kind of beer. Bug squashing, educating, evangelizing, and respecting. I like the last one a lot, respecting each other. We're going through some challenging times. And the more we can respect the other person's point of view, the better off we're going to be. So what are some ways that you in the community can help us improve what we're doing here? Obviously, here's some of the basics. You always hear this. If you want to get involved in the community, hop into the forums. You and 380,000 people, it's a lot of stuff going on. That's sometimes difficult. Okay, but you should do that. Get some feedback. Give us some feedback on some requests for information. Submit patches. Write documentation. Spread the words about attending Joomla days and user groups. And J and beyond. Maybe multiple J and beyonds in the future. But what else can we do at OSM to make this stuff easy? I've been talking to a lot of people. And the number of times people say, Ryan, there's a wall. Ryan, there's a barrier to entry. Ryan, it needs to be made simpler and easy. We're trying to help the project. Well, we can make it easier to contribute money. I had a great conversation last night of people saying, it's been really tough just to give. I don't have time to work, but I have the opportunity to give money. We can do better. We can encourage what I'm calling social patches. If that catches on, maybe, maybe not. But the idea of if you can't code, you can still contribute. But let's contribute in a way that helps us as a community move forward in a direction, not random scattershot. Let's focus our energies. What if we found ways to provide volunteer opportunities that were clear and defined? It's not a job, but we're looking for the right people for the right tasks and reaching our goals as a community. And finally, I think, listening, 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 and then taking action based on what we hear. So some recent progress and success, uh, the Ask the Team IRC sessions. Robert, I believe that was an idea of yours to begin with. This is correct. Um, Robert had this idea of continuing this transparency, making sure the leadership team was more accountable and talking to the community. Huge success. Uh, communications process. Uh, where's Steve? I'm sure he's hiding or asleep. Is Steve Burge in the room? No, OK. I'll, I'll pat him on the back later on. He's been doing an amazing job in OSM, finding ways for us to improve the way we communicate with the community. And he's been doing a pretty darn good job of it. Regular reports from people like me as to what the heck we're doing on a regular basis. I can't wait for my next blog post to talk about this event. We've got folks, big companies like Microsoft now, that have signed our contributor agreement. One of the new things that I'm happy to announce today is that I, as a leader, know I can do a better job. And I know that our board wishes as well to be empowered and smarter and better leaders themselves for the community. So I've had an opportunity to engage on a pro bono, free basis with an organizational, organization professional to help us improve the way we do things in OSM. And I'm happy to say, effective, I think it was just a couple of days ago, I've been having some of my first meetings. And over the course of the next four months, in our efforts to do a better job for you, to be more transparent, to help empower you, to be more accountable to you, we're taking on this individual to help us learn how to do that better. And finally, uh, is, is RT. Yes, RT. We have a wonderful person who is working hard to do some research in part of your PhD program, correct? It's part of a PhD program. She is researching you. This is, you're her population. And I, I don't want to overwhelm you, I'm sorry, but you guys need to talk to her. She needs to talk to as many of you as possible. She's doing an economic research and understanding why is this community so darn successful. It's an open source free project. What are we doing? How is this possible? This is not the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be having locked down source code, everything encrypted, no GPL. And amazingly, you guys are writing amazing GPL software and making lots of money. And the world wants to know why. And we're lucky enough to have somebody looking into it. We can always do better, of course. We can encourage more individuals and companies 
to contribute code to the project and find ways to do that by lowering barriers to entry. Oops, I just skipped my slide. We can increase responsiveness. How many times have you ever sent anything to the project and never heard anything back? Has anybody had that experience or has taken months to? That is, I've never heard that before. We're looking into it. I'm looking into it. I'm responsible for this stuff. And we're doing a better job. Well, we're going to continue to do a better job. We need to nurture sponsorship opportunities and look outside the Joomla world in the open source community to see how, how does this work elsewhere? How do we look beyond where we're at today? As a leadership team, we can always learn more. The support and energy you have are critical components to our success. That's why I travel. That's why I listen. And we need to make sure that we're aligning everybody's strengths. What are you good at? Come tell us. How can we make sure that what, you, what you're good at what you enjoy and what you're passionate about can help us drive in, a, in an effort moving forward. Lots of success. Commercial ecosystem that's looking fabulous. Improved communications. Lots of good information. However, I wanted to take at least a few moments to give you guys an opportunity to grill me. Maybe this is Prime Minister's questions. On any questions you have, I have Brian here to allow you a chance to say whatever you want. So if anybody's got any questions for Ryan, I'm just going to try and run around the room and pass you the microphone so it can get uh, recorded as well. You ready for this? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So we are five years down the road almost. You're now three months president. You've talked to a lot of people. What is Joomla going to look like in five years from now? I wasn't ready for exercise this early. <laughs> This is a personal, my opinion. Thank you for allowing me that exit. <clears throat> I should take off my jacket or something so you know it's personal. I've already unloosened the tie a bit. Um, you know, I'll be very simple. I don't have all the answers, but I do know one thing. This goes back to the slide I said earlier on. I think from the people I work with, from the organizations we help, from the companies you guys serve, that idea of Having a community and having software that empowers people, that keeps it simple, but gives developers control to do amazing things is important. I, I've had a lot of phones before, but I've never had a phone as powerful as an iPhone. Now, Apple's got challenges. This is not an open source product. This is a very, very, very closed community. But I can use this really easily. My mom can use this really easily. I can communicate with folks ridiculous numbers of ways that I can't even keep up with. From the Joomla world, I think we have an opportunity over the course of the next five years to build software that enables people to communicate, to raise money if you're a nonprofit, to spread the word, to build new generations of applications that help us empower these developers and make it simple for users. As our life is moving into the cloud, as we're doing more software uh, that's important to us on the web, we've got to find ways to keep it simple. So my vision of Joomla is really software that has a robust community that allows us to grow, but at the same time makes life easier for people. I don't know exactly what that's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a particular widget that just runs an e-commerce store. I think it's as nebulous in five years from now as it is today. But I know that as a community, we've got a lot of energy here. I still believe the community is more important than the software itself. And I think if we can find ways to continue to drive that forward, we'll do a good job. And that's an, uh, OK. I love that. I will take you up on that opportunity. Thank you. I just did that so Brian would have exercise. I don't have a question. <laughs> OK, I'll ask one. We all love uh, more transparency. And, and so we, the more you can do, that's, that's great, especially if, uh, at the OSM level. What about the CLT level? How do we get more transparency there? So 
um, as, as the president of OSM and as a limited governance kind of guy, I, I feel that what I can do best and what I've been asked to do is to focus simply on what we can do at Open Source Matters. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fool. I know that if we can show success, if we can do good work in OSM, that can have a spillover effect. Those ideas could spill over to the community leadership team, to the production leadership team. And what I think, hmm, it's a good question. On the, on the community leadership team, uh, I think that working group can continue the success that it's had. I mean, the JED and others have been very successful in, in keeping up now with what we've got. Um, I think we need to find, uh, continue to find new leaders, uh, ask people for specific skill sets that can help us moving forward. Um, I think communication would be helpful. I know that a lot of people, when we saw the hands raise, people said it's challenging sometimes to get in touch with folks, probably on the community side as well as in OSM. So anything we can do to lower those barriers, to get the right people in the right positions into the future as we're growing in a community that's up and to the right um, is going to be helpful. I, I don't have one exact tool or silver bullet that's going to help make that better. I think we've got good leaders there that can, can take some of the ideas that we're trying out in OSM and see if that kind of transparency and that kind of quick feedback and accountability would be useful there. Oh, and a follow-up. I think we should always have transparency. We should see more transparency in the leadership team, more transparency in OSM, everywhere. I think, I think if we look at the mission, vision, and values as what we, we produced together um, in our uh, summit back in um, summer of 2008, um, I, don't, I took that slide out because I'm talking to an audience of people that might have already seen that page. In order for us to reach those goals in any part of the project, I believe, we need to be more transparent. We've got to continue to foster empowerment. And we have to continue to be more accountable to people. I think that's a basic tenet of what we need to do as leaders. Anybody else? Come on, someone must have a question for Ryan. He's flown all the way here. Could you, could you, no? OK, I'd like to end with one last question. And about, I, I asked Johan this one at the Jumna Day previously, so you've got some Something to, to <laughs> you've got something to you've got something to live up to. I think maybe this will be a new blog post. Johan said this. Ryan said this. Compare and contrast. Do you believe in sex on the first date? <laughs> I uh, I humbly respect the kind and intelligent transparent question. <laughs> uh, what if I said, like 1.6, no comment? Okay, thank you very much, Ryan. Um,